Well, definitely in that part of the season uh, where we continue to look forward and build for our 23-24 uh, results. And that started as soon as we uh, entered into a postseason. Um, obviously, looking back in retrospect of our year uh, as a head coach, um, you know, I'm disappointed still at our results. I truly believe we could have uh, and we had the goal of playing on April 1st and April 3rd, as I've always mentioned. Um, but congratulations to UConn and all the other teams that advanced. Uh, it still was a great tournament uh, and one that we look forward in playing and playing in in the future. Any questions? Dennis, uh, what is kind of the approach? I mean, do you have a certain number of guys you're you're still looking to add in the portal? And and with everything so fluid, can you just kind of take us through the process of of building and, and managing a roster over the next couple of months? Well, managing a roster is is simple. There's several moving parts. There's never going to be a concrete or direct answer or response. Uh, but ultimately, you have to protect yourself. And I'm saying that in different phases uh, is more is more um, popular to be in a portal. Uh, as you guys see, the numbers continue to rise of uh, portal additions. We've we've lost, um, you know, Ronnie DeGray as well as Mo Diara into the portal. And, you know, I thank them as you guys have probably read my tweets of publicly thanking them, but I'll say it here. I thank them for their contributions in our program and institution. And they'll always be a part of my um, my life uh, as a head coach. But as it relates to roster management, it's definitely important to continue to build. Now you have to protect yourself. You always have to recruit as if someone's going to leave. And if you don't recruit that way, you can be stuck with nothing uh, or be caught behind in a recruiting battle that you never had an opportunity to begin with uh, because of your assumptions. And you can't make assumptions of, of rosters. So this day and age in college athletics, you have to assume that that everyone's leaving. Uh, therefore, you're able to continue to uh, build the relationships in the recruiting world that you need to build, um, whereas years past, you weren't able to do that. Dennis, I, I think, of your guys with remaining eligibility, I think Noah is the only one who's come out publicly and said he plans to come back next year. I mean, do you have a feel for where everyone else stands uh, as of 1130 on on, on uh, April 13th? No, you have to understand the portal deadline. And I don't put added pressure on our guys in these conversations. I assume uh, in recruiting that no one's coming back. And I assume in my relationship that everyone's coming back. I treat our guys as if they're going to come back. Ronnie DeGray is still getting individual workouts with our coaches. He's still a player from Missouri. Uh, same as Mo Diara, same as uh, Nick um, Honor, Isaiah Mosley, Sean East, and all those guys. So I don't differentiate that. I allow those deadlines to really impact when it's time to make a decision. Dennis, I'm sure you thought after the end of the season that C.Y. Young would get some head coaching offers, but obviously he came out on Twitter and just said that he's really grateful for this and excited for what he can bring to Mizzou in the future. Just what's that mean for you moving forward? Well, what it means is um, we've we hired the right right people, the right guys, and for him to be by our side as associate head coach here at Mizzou is one of the reasons why we were. Uh, successful this season and you have to understand his relationships uh, throughout college basketball but his expertise offensively and defensively does a great job on the sideline but also in the locker room and helping me organize a certain way so uh, keeping him here is definitely important but this is part of the offseason if you're not doing things special right your staff does not get the inquiries uh, and obviously if you don't have good good, good a good staff by your side um, you know, they're not going to get the in inquiries. When we built the staff, I expect every offseason our guys to have a decision to make based off of other schools, other institutions being interested in them becoming head coaches. Uh, lateral moves are lateral moves, but as it relates to becoming head coaches, Coach Young wasn't the only person that interviewed for jobs or even had opportunities uh, out there, but we have a great staff in place, and I'm thankful that he calls this place home and he's very comfortable with, with our progress.
Dennis, what do you see in, in John Tanjay's game that that drew you and the staff to him to want to bring him in? Absolutely. I, I think when you look at the the fabric at which we've been building our program with, I think he demonstrates that same development throughout his career, that humility, that humbleness to be able to jump right in from where he was at to being a great teammate. I think that synergy is very important in yielding results. John Tonjay does a great job and has done a great job if you look at his stats, but also winning percentage. If you look at the program that he is coming from, uh, those are all things that are important, but also the reasons behind possibly transferring. He's a graduate. And ultimately, those are important things to me uh, when I look at uh, the Trey Million, Demoy Hodge, and Dre Goldston, those kids, those young people, they came uh, as graduates, and they, they he'll be able to unselfishly fit that bill when it comes down to his intangibles, his leadership, but also his his style of play on both ends of the court. Coach, with, um, um, Coach with um with John and Kurt, even though they've played as much college basketball as they have, where do you see the biggest opportunities for growth with them as they come into your program? Well, I think when you look at our entire class, um, you look at Ant Robinson as a guard, um, those other two guys are guards, are, are guards that have played at the college level. Uh, John has done a great job in the Mountain West Conference at Colorado State, but also you have to look at Kurt Lewis and his production, not just as a JUCO, National JUCO Player of the Year, but during his time at uh, Eastern Kentucky. Uh, he's a guy that brings us some tremendous experience, uh, which is something that's important for me, but also the notoriety and the importance of the style of play. He shot the ball very well from behind the arc. He was able to do some things defensively. I think these guys give us a good amount of size as well uh, with their strength and their physicality uh, on both ends of the court. So collectively, I think they just add a dimension. We're not done recruiting. We're going to continue to recruit. Uh, and ultimately, we have to do so not just from that guard perspective, but also uh, viable bigs uh, and post players that we're that we're looking to uh, bring in. Dennis, in, in your conversations with Kobe, not just since the season ended, but going forward, how do you balance? I mean, obviously, it's great for your program if he uses that extra year versus yeah. making sure you're advising him what, what's best for him. Well, I, I, the way I approach all our guys during this time who have the ability to forego uh, a year of eligibility to pursue professional uh, goals and aspirations is simple. Uh, there's deadlines within the NBA. There's deadlines that you have to follow. We won't know anything with Kobe's positioning, right, because he's not that lottery pick on paper. He has to go through that process, and we won't know uh, until that Chicago combine that uh, the feedback is where it should be for him to make a decision for him and his family. So I just give him space, give him peace, but also give him counsel when he comes to me with questions of the process, right? Because this is his first time. This is my uh, 20th year coaching. So we've had guys in the past, the process hadn't changed much uh, when you look at it. Uh, I do think uh, the deadlines for a Kobe Brown is different than a deadline for a Nick Honor or anyone else who can uh, pursue. And he has to go through individual interviews with NBA organizations. He has to go through the pre-draft camp. He has to go through maybe the G League pre-draft camp. We have to give him that time to access uh, those results. Last year was different with Kobe because the undergraduate advisory committee results uh, had him predicted as a not drafted player. Uh, and it made his decision a lot quicker. Right now, uh, if you look at mock drafts and different things like that, they have him in that second round range. Uh, do I think Kobe Brown's a first round draft pick? Absolutely. Absolutely. But the council above doesn't know the things that I know about him. Uh, and they are doing a lot of research on college athletes. Uh, and it's a ton. So I just hope he gets the feedback he needs to make the decision uh, that's viable for him and his future. Um, Coach, to go back to John Tanji real quick, um, can you tell us a little bit about the process of getting to know him and, and figuring out if he would be a good fit with your, your team's culture? 
So first, you got to watch film, right? I think when you look at the system uh, of their head coach, uh, Nico, Nico does a great job. And and you look at the success rate of that of that team. You look at the conference, the level of uh, play that he's had to play against, the uh, atmospheres. You look at different things that you think could cause you to think of it as a similarity, right? And those things matter. And any recruiting, we measure our guys on our eight core values of friendship, love, accountability, trust, discipline, unselfishness, enthusiasm, and toughness. And we want that to be sort of the barometer at which we feel a kid fits. And John fits all those things. We enjoyed the conversation with him. I've enjoyed the conversation with his mom. I've enjoyed the conversation with his entire circle, but also I've enjoyed the conversation uh, with when we do background checks on on the staff that he's coming from. Uh, sometimes you have to, um, you know, do those background checks. In high school, we will talk to the high school coach. Junior college, we will talk to the junior college coach. Now in the transfer portal, you have to, no matter how uncomfortable it may be, you have to talk to the coaches that those kids are coming from. Dennis, I was kind of curious, when you consider the amount of players in the portal and also it kind of seems like there's a surprise entry every single week, is is recruiting the portal this year different from, from previous years? Yeah, uh, there's no doubt about it because you got to look at when it began to become popular. Before the portal or transferring was not recommended. It was looked and shunned upon as a bad thing. Now it's normalized. So if you look at the portal additions, kids – our first round or or first team all conference players putting their name in a the portal. There are kids who are all Americans putting their name in the portal. There are young people, not just in men's basketball, but women's basketball. When you start to see it collectively on both sides, it's not just the men's basketball, it's not just the women's basketball thing. It is now a college thing. It is the way of life. You're gonna have student athletes. 10 years, 15 years from their eligibility being, uh, you know, finalized, going to two or three, right, alumni weekends. That will be normalized now more than ever before because it's just the rules. They they are doing what the rules say they can do. And it's giving them the option to, A, uh, reinvigorate their college, right, college experience, B, uh, move forward to see and figure out if there's something new to be done, different styles of play. Uh, there's, they're not just moving just to move. They're moving because they're in search of something else. I just hope one day we can look back and reflect and they can reflect that they have either stayed through a storm that allowed them to develop as young people and get better in development versus running running from the development and and whatever they could work through because it's going to show up later in life at some point in time especially if you have the traditional portal entries versus the non-traditional the non-traditional is those guys and young ladies who are graduates right i think they have an option to do so the the other tradition of it is just transferring looking for greener pastures and, and you have two sets of, of things. Now there's extreme experiences or extreme situations where I think young people have to get a change. I understand that. There are sometimes mistakes that are made and they wish they can just reset it. I understand that. But I just hope they don't run from the journey that's going to allow them to, to build their character, but also set them up uh, for failure later in life because I think there are success stories on on perseverance. Dennis, when you, when you look at <clears throat> when you look at all that and, and building rosters and, and the, the turnover that happens as you go into this offseason, did did last year's team and the where the way they came together and how close they got so fast, did that teach you and the staff anything or or did you learn anything from from how to bring teams together based on last year? No, I think I've shown the ability to do that. Uh, collectively throughout my career based off the cards that have been dealt. I got hired at Cleveland State in August, right? At the end of July, beginning of August, and we were able to put together a program and identify kids. In that first class was Trey Gomillion, an unbelievable winner. So we've been able, because of the blueprint that I have from Leonard Hamilton, to build programs. Now we have to assess the conditions at which we have to build them. As it relates to the big picture of 
building, I think we have a staff in place that that also sees it from a different perspective. Uh, they have experience. They have unbelievable uh, relationships. And that's what it's about. It's about building those relationships, but also making sure you don't get left back uh, in time as our sport, as our environment evolves. We're in the middle of an evolution in college athletics, and we have to continue to evolve in it. And that's what we're doing. So we're going to continue to do research, continue to do the things that allows us to obtain the information so we won't be left behind. And you have to be able to build a team, but also you have to be able to build a locker room with the right people. It's a it's a people's sport. You have to have the right people on the team at the right time uh, who are collectively and connected in a way that they won't get off track when it comes down to the tough and endure the the, the hard and difficult moments. There were some difficult moments this year. I'm proud of the way we progressed in building our team to build them some some resolve and and obviously uh, perseverance to get through the other side of of what we knew we had in the locker room as coaches. Dennis, Coach. is there is there a path for for Isaiah to return on scholarship? And if so, what's that process look like for him and you and the staff? Yeah, there's definitely a path for that. Uh, again. We have deadlines in place, uh, and those deadlines won't come until the portal entry deadline, but also the NBA deadline. Again, we were able, and Isaiah Mosley was able to pursue a professional career. His name was in the draft last year, uh, not just in a portal. So he has dreams and aspirations of, of his basketball career, but also uh, when you look at collectively this season, uh, I'm going to continue to put my arms around all of our team uh, when it comes down to making sure they are in the right positions professionally, personally, uh, and obviously here when it comes down to receiving their degrees. Dennis, there sometimes seems to be a little bit of confusion about how many, you know, you can carry on scholarship, how many you can dress for a game. Can you just kind of clarify how many how many players you can carry on a roster going into the season? and? Uh, and Hey, I would say this in this era, okay, and I would suggest you guys do this. You cannot any longer assume that players are just operating under 13 scholarships. There were several walk-ons this season, this season alone, that you guys don't know was walk-ons on other rosters, but they would easily be considered, man, that's a scholarship guy. So you have to operate in your mind, not just under 13, because certain kids are qualifying for in-state tuition and some kids are now able to pay their own way. So you can't operate and assume that rosters are capped at 13 kids. You can't assume that because ultimately uh, there's ingenuity into uh, building rosters more than ever before. Uh, and you can't count the way that we all have been counting previously. Uh, there, there's unbelievable um, amount of kids out there in the portal, but that sum does not equal the 13 scholarships that each institution has. At Cleveland State alone, because of waivers and certain things, I had 16 players on scholarship my last season, 16, 16 of them. So you have to understand the new rules behind certain things that takes place. And I would just not, you know, jump out and assume that, OK, each institution is operating just under uh, the, the maximum or minimum of 13 scholarships. Hey, Coach, I'd like yes. to uh, go back to uh, your, your statement about Kobe thinking that he's a, a first round NBA pick. And you said there's some qualities, you know, that NBA teams don't. I was wondering if you could just uh, elaborate on those qualities. Well, I think he's a great, great uh, player. Um, and as I said before, during this time last year, that Kobe Brown will go down as one of the all time greats at Mizzou. Uh, you have to look at a the climate at which we're in. Um, most kids nowadays won't be at an institution for four, yet alone five years uh, to be able to make the impact that he has made. Most kids have tapped out of uh, their ceiling of improvement. Uh, Kobe Brown has consistently improved and made a big jump. Uh, I think ultimately what NBA teams look at sometimes is not where a kid is, but what they've done. Kobe Brown has improved 
unbelievable amounts. However, they want a larger sample size sometimes. And, uh, you know, I don't want Kobe to be uh, penalized for the style of play that we play because it's a great style of play that allowed him to show some things and you can't control anything else. And to be able to be needed to shoot the ball, how he shot the ball and put in certain positions uh, was very important to our success. And he was able to do that at a high level. Uh, I think sometimes as a as a GM or a president of basketball or decision maker in the NBA and pro sports, they want more. Uh, they want to see more. They want to pick things apart, but not focus on what a kid does well. Uh, I think Kobe Brown will continue to develop no matter where he's at in the next four years. He still hadn't played his best basketball, and I think his best basketball is ahead of him. Uh, where there's more space, there's more things to be done, uh, and the style of play is different. He's able to use his strength and not get into foul trouble uh, certain ways, but also uh, consistently shoot the ball the way that he needs to shoot the ball. He's a better ball handler. Um, I think shooting off the move is something that they'll probably try to see if he's good at when you look at shooting percentages. Can he shoot off the move? That's going to be something that they try to figure out. Uh, but they'll be pleasant, pleasantly surprised when he interviews his personality, uh, his different different ways of thinking the game, his basketball IQ. They will be shocked at how well he's done certain things. And when you're in transition of positioning, they want to see you defend. Uh, no one stops anybody uh, on the defensive end in the NBA. It's tough shot makers. So we have a system that showed his versatility. We're switching one through five. So hopefully that has helped. Again, we won't know until the Chicago pre-draft camp or his individual workouts with several NBA teams. And I'm looking forward to supporting him in that. Demoy Hodge is currently at the Port Smith camp, um, but also some other guys are out interviewing with some G League and NBA teams. Dre Golston is interviewing uh, with some teams. Trey Goldmillion is interviewing with some teams. Uh, so we have some great things happening behind the scenes. Uh, although uh, everyone isn't playing in these tournaments, these guys are being interviewed. We're doing our job in fielding background checks uh, that are coming to us. Organizations are calling. Uh, and that's the right traffic that you need to have guys have opportunities. Dennis, we've talked so much about the portal, and I know that's the the kind of shiny new thing this time of year. But AAU season is about to start. You got three high school kids coming in. Do you look at the portal going forward as is that the major focus of of recruiting or is that a way to kind of fill in? I guess, how does that impact, you know, high school kids and in, in the yeah. way you build your program? So I'll tell you this. When you look at the numbers starting from the 2020 season, right, the 2020 season when everyone was given an opportunity to um, have an extra year that entire body of players will no longer be available uh, because they would have maturated and graduated. This is the last class of that. So I think the bottom or even the top of the transfer portal will go down and you'll have more entry level guys coming from junior college and high school. That doesn't mean kids won't try to figure out how to transfer with them, but at least the sum of those numbers will drop a little bit because there's no more extra year portal kids using up the fifth or sometimes six years. Those kids will now be the kids of injuries, the kids of uh, medical clearance or, or red shirt. Uh, that, that's what it will be. It won't be any pandemic uh, players. So ultimately, when you look at um, the popularity, it's very popular to be in a portal. People want to see what's on the other side. And some may even put their name in a portal and come back to or return to their institution. You'll see some of that as well. And I just think our guys and our student athletes uh, here uh, has a have a great, great environment. The city of Columbia has a great learning, um, you know, uh, sort of sort of platform for these kids. And we have some great coaches and it's not just a basketball thing. It's going to be explored through all sports. And we just have a great environment for kids to concentrate academically, athletically, but also grow. Uh, and I'm proud to be a part of Mizzou. I'm excited about our leadership, board of curators, our president, Moon Choi, our athletic director, Desiree Reed-Francois. Um, and it's it's all collective, man. And, and when we bring a kid 
on campus, you know, we give them the experience of what life will be like, not a, an imaginary place uh, that sometimes, you know, people uh, lean on to recruit. So we just give them the the, the real uh, responses of what their everyday would be. Time for one last question. All right. Dennis, Thanks, Coach. Uh, really quick, yeah. just uh, you talked about wanting to add a big or bigs, multiple, just – even though what you guys had this year did work for 25 wins and, and yeah. did a lot of good things, just what, what can, what's the upside of getting some size? Well, the right size is not just getting size. It's the right size, having the right people in your locker room to fit your style of play. I'm not changing my style of play. We're going to get better and tweak it to the individual, but I'm not, I'm still trying to lead to country in three point shooting. I'm still trying to lead to country in positive assist to turnover ratio. There are certain things that I, even you guys asked at this time last year, I still want to put pressure offensively and defensively. And you got to still find the right guys. Uh, we have the right guys in the locker room last year. We have to make sure we have the right guys in the locker room this year. So just because it's size, it has to be the right size. We've turned down size this year because it wasn't the correct size that we needed that fit our system defensively and offensively. But you got to have the right pieces, pieces that work together. You don't want to have any any kind of errors in the recruiting, as we know the margin of error is, is very slim from team to team and game to game. It's been an advantage for us. What we have to protect is making sure we can continue to play our style of play uh, that has been able to show uh, some results that we we were uh, excited about, no matter what categories that we were in some eyes not so good at. It's the collective and analytical approach that I take that doesn't allow me to look at certain things as negatives. But uh, we're going to continue to recruit and identify the young people and watch a lot of film. Uh, but I think the high school kids, Anthony Robinson, uh, Trent Pierce, Jordan Butler, you guys have been able to see let's say Trent Pierce on the national TV, right? You see how he fits with his size. He has size for position. Jordan Butler has size for position. He's not going to stop us from not shooting three-pointers. I expect him to be prepared to shoot the ball from behind the arc. And anyone that we bring in here will be shooting threes. And I, that's just a style of play that I believe I will be successful playing. And I'm not going to stop. There was a time in this season where – you guys were looking at me like I was crazy. Coach, that shooting percentage ain't right. <laughs> we're, we're missing a lot of threes, but you're telling them to keep shooting. I'm glad I'm, I told them to keep shooting because they have to be able to navigate through that portion, but also stay strong in what we identify as a way and a style. And that style over a 20 to 35 games a season, uh, one game cannot define your stats. One game won't stop you from uh, getting to that NCAA tournament and hopefully national championship game. But we have to continue to play the style in a regular season that we think um, fits our personnel, but also fits the success in our, in our conference. All right. Thanks coach. Thanks. Have a great day, guys. Good to see you. I miss you guys. I got amnesia. I got separation anxiety. You guys, I, I wish you were sitting here. You know, I'm going through something. I'm going through postseason depression like most coaches go through there's only one team that ends their season on a win and that is UConn this season no matter what goals have been stopped and we got to get through uh the depression phase and turn that into uh something more positive but seeing you guys today helps me get out of that depression so I appreciate it